Today I'm going to show you how to knit a small messenger bag using a circular knitting machine. This is one of my favorite patterns. It's cozy, it's functional, and I love being able to knit them in a few different colors to match my different outfits. If you make this project, please tag me on social media when you share your work, at Diana Levine Knits on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. This pattern includes three different sizes, the small size, which is a handbag, the medium size, which is a shoulder bag, and the large size, which is a crossbody bag. I'm going to show you every step of the process in this video, but if you'd like to support the channel, you can purchase the printable download in my shop linked below. For all three sizes, the bag itself measures approximately 8 inches wide, the small size measures about 11 inches tall, the medium size measures about about 18 inches tall, and the large size measures about 22 inches tall. This bag is the perfect size to carry a phone, wallet, keys, and a few other small items. I'm also working on a pattern for the larger version of this bag, so stay tuned for that video. I have lots more fun, quick and easy knitting machine patterns coming soon, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date when I release my latest videos. And if you'd like to check out all my knitting machine books, templates, and patterns, visit dianalavinenits.com. There are so many ways to customize these bags. You can add a magnetic clasp, you could line the inside with fabric, you could add embellishments to the front, you could use double knitting to create a pattern on the outside, or you could try adding a pocket to the inside of the bag. If you like this project, you might also like some of my other knitting machine bag patterns, available in my purses and bags playlist. A small tote bag, a large tote bag, a shoulder purse, a wristlet clutch, pencil cases, and mini purses. In terms of timing, it took me about 1 hour and 20 minutes from beginning to end to knit the small size, about 1 hour and 40 minutes to knit the medium size, and about 2 hours to knit the large size bag. But we all go at different paces, so project time will vary from person to person. The techniques I'll walk you through in this video include casting on and off of a knitting machine, seaming the ends of a knitting machine tube, assembling a bag, and seaming pieces together using the mattress stitch. All the supplies I'm using today are linked in the description below. For this project, I'm using a 46 needle Addy King size express knitting machine, but you can also make this with the Centro 48 needle machine. Your bag will just be a touch wider than the bags shown in this video. I'm also using a 22 needle Addy knitting machine, and you can swap this out for the Centro 22 needle. I knit these bags using loops and threads impeccable yarn in the colors Putty, Aruba Blue, and Sea Green. For the small and medium size, I used less than one skein per bag, and for the large size, I used a full skein plus about a quarter of a second skein. You'll also need stitch markers, a crochet hook, a darning needle, and a pair of scissors, as well as any solid item about two or three inches in height to help when we seam, a piece of cardboard, and if you'd like to include one, a knitting tag. Step one is knitting the main piece. Begin by casting onto a 46 or 48 needle machine using scrap yarn. Wrap your yarn around the first needle and then weave the yarn back and forth along all the needles until the end of the row. When you reach the first needle again, thread the yarn into the tensioner. If you're using an Addy, hold the yarn in your hand to provide tension. If you're using a Centro, place the yarn into the middle tensioner. Knit five rows in the scrap yarn. When you finish five rows, cut a short tail in the scrap yarn and throw it into the middle of the machine. Then, leave a normal length tail in the main color yarn and throw it into the middle of the machine, right next to the scrap yarn tail. Hold the two tails close and low as you slowly begin to knit the next row. Go slowly at first, making sure it catches all of your stitches. Knit 110 rows in the main color. You may have noticed that I normally leave an extra long tail in my main colors when knitting bags to use later when we're seaming. However, I find that for this pattern, it's easier to use a new length of yarn for seaming rather than the yarn tail. So for this project, you can just leave a normal length yarn tail in the main color. A quick note about tension. Tension can vary from person to person and from yarn to yarn. When you knit this project, your pieces might come out slightly shorter or longer than mine. This is a pretty forgiving project, so if your pieces come out longer or shorter than mine, it's totally fine, your bag will just be a little taller or shorter. And in related news, if you'd like to knit a taller bag, knit more rows for the main piece. If you'd like to knit a shorter bag, knit less rows. When your work starts to touch the table, pull the work up inside the machine. When you finish 110 rows, switch back to the scrap yarn. Cut a normal sized tail in the main color and throw it in the middle of the machine. Then cut a short tail in the scrap yarn and put it right next to the main color tail. Hold the two tails close together and low as you slowly begin to knit the next row. Knit five rows in the scrap yarn. When you finish five rows, cut a short tail in the scrap yarn and continue knitting until the work falls off the needles. Pull the work out of the machine and gently stretch out the stitches. Put the work aside for now while we knit the handle. Step two is knitting the handle. 
Switch to a 22 needle machine. Cast on in the same way we cast on earlier, wrapping the yarn around the first needle and then weaving the yarn back and forth along all the needles until the end of the row. When you reach the first needle again, thread the yarn into the tensioner. Knit 5 rows in the scrap yarn. After 5 rows, switch to the main color and knit slowly at first to make sure it catches all your first few stitches. For the small size handbag, knit 130 rows. For the medium size shoulder bag, knit 200 rows. For the large size crossbody bag, which is the bag I'll be knitting in this demonstration, knit 265 rows. When your work starts to touch the table, pull the work inside the machine. As you continue knitting, especially if you're knitting the large size like I'm knitting today, you'll need to roll the work as you continue to keep it within the machine. It can get pretty tight at the end because the space inside this machine is so much smaller than the larger machine, but just continue rolling the work and then it'll fall down as you knit further, repeating until the end of the project. When you finish the number of rows needed for your handle, switch back to the scrap yarn. Knit 5 rows in the scrap yarn. When you finish 5 rows, cut a short tail in the yarn and continue knitting until the work falls off the needles. Pull the work out of the machine and gently stretch out the stitches. You should now have two finished pieces of knitting, the main piece of the bag and the handle. Step 3 is seaming the sides of the tubes. You'll notice that both pieces have open sides of the tubes. The next step is to use a crochet hook to seam the sides closed. I'll show you the process here, but if you need a little more help, I'll link below to a video that shows the seaming process in more detail. Bring the sides of the tube together, lining up the stitches on top of each other, with the two yarn tails all the way to the left side. Make sure that when you arrange the stitches, there's one stitch all the way to the right that's perpendicular to the rest of the stitches. Bring your crochet hook under that loop all the way to the right, and then pull through the stitch that's to its left on the top side. Then pull through the stitch that's to its left on the bottom side. Continue in this pattern, pulling through the next stitch on the top, followed by the next stitch on the bottom, until the end of the row. When you reach the end of the row, pull the yarn tail through. Your side is now seamed. Next, remove the scrap yarn. One side should be removed fairly easily. Pull the yarn around and around until it pulls off completely, leaving just the seamed edge. Here you'll see what the final seam will look like. Next, turn the work around and use the same process to seam the other side of the work. For the side that's more difficult to remove, identify the top length of yarn running through the stitches and remove that length a few stitches at a time until the end of the row. After that yarn is removed, the rest of the yarn should pull off much more easily. We just finished seaming both sides of the main piece. Next, seam the sides of the handle. Follow the exact same process as earlier to use a crochet hook to seam both sides of the handle and remove the scrap yarn. Both of our pieces are now seamed and the bag is ready to be assembled. The main piece measures approximately 21 and a half inches long. The handle for the small size measures approximately 16 inches long. The handle for the medium size measures about 40 inches long. And the handle for the large size measures about 48 inches long. Step four is assembling the bag. Lay your main piece out vertically. Fold the bottom third up. Then fold the top third down. Line up your handles on the side of the work. Then open up the bag again and place any solid item that's about two to three inches tall in the middle of the bag. I'm using a roll of gaff tape which works well, but there's lots of items you could use as long as it's a similar size. Bring the bottom of the bag back up over the item and work to align it evenly with the handles. Step five is attaching the pieces with stitch markers. Use stitch markers to bring the work together where we'll be seaming. In some projects, you can get away without using the stitch markers even when they're recommended, but in this project, I really do suggest using them because it will help a lot to keep your piece seamed evenly. When you finish the stitch markers in the front, turn the bag around and add them to the corners. Then turn the back over and add them to the back side, stopping at the same height as the front of the bag. As you use the stitch markers, I find it helpful to place them around the stitches that are directly under the bars you'll be using for the mattress stitch. More about that in a minute. The bottom half of the bag should measure about 6 inches tall, but if you're knitting a shorter or a longer bag, this measurement will vary. Our bag is ready to seam. Step 6 is seaming with the mattress stitch. When I use the mattress stitch, my first step is identifying two rows of V-shaped stitches on either side of the pieces I'll be joining, going in the same direction. Here are the rows I'll be bringing together for these two pieces. Next, I'll look for the bars on the inside of the stitch directly next to those rows, located here. For this pattern, I'm cutting a new length of yarn to use for seaming. To assess how much yarn I'll need, I like to casually wrap the yarn around the entire length of what I'm seaming, and then I double that length, and usually add a little more to be on the safe side. 
Then thread the yarn onto a darning needle and secure it with a knot on an interior bar on the inside of the purse. Then thread it through to the corner of the work. Look for the bars we discussed earlier. Thread your needle through two bars on the other side of the work. I'll show you a close-up of how I'm working these stitches here. Then thread the needle through two bars on the other side of the work. I'll show you a close-up of how I'm working those stitches here. Continue in this pattern, threading through two bars on one side and then two bars on the other side until the end of the row. As you near the stitch markers, remove them as you go. You can also go one stitch at a time if you prefer. Either one stitch at a time or two stitches at a time will work well for the front and back of the bag. When you reach the corner of the bag, we'll change the process a bit. For the sides, switch to alternating one stitch at a time. For the side with the handle, I'll be threading through the two bars of the bottom V-shaped stitch. I'll show you a close-up of how I'm working through the handle stitches here. For the side of the main bag piece, continue threading through the same interior bars as we did earlier. Here's a close-up of how I'm working through that stitch. Continue to the end of the row. When you reach the corner, turn the work and go back to the same style mattress stitch we used to seam the front of the bag. As you near the end of the seam, make sure to check that you're ending the seam at the same height as the front of the bag. You might need to check this a few times as you work to make sure you're ending the back seam at the same height as the front piece. When you've got it at the right place, pull through one more loop on the other side to keep the seam closed tightly. Thread the needle to the inside area a few stitches in, secure the yarn tail with a few good knots on an interior bar between the stitches, and then weave in the ends. We just finished seaming one side of the bag. Next, repeat the exact same process on the other side of the bag to finish attaching the handle. Step seven is weaving in and trimming the yarn tails. Your work will have lots of yarn tails left out. When working with knitting machine pieces, it's really easy to weave in the ends because there's a center area of the work where you can hide the yarn. Turn your bag inside out, secure all the yarn tails with knots if need be, and then weave in and trim the tails. Turn the work back to right side out. Our bag is almost complete. Step eight is adding a knitting tag. This step is optional, but I like to add a knitting tag to all my work, and I'll link below to the shop where I order my tags. Step nine is adding a little support. These bags are knitted items, so they have a little stretch to them. If you'd like to add a little support to the bottom, cut a piece of cardboard about the same size as the bottom of the bag and add it into the bag before putting in your items. Or if you'd like more support, you can sew a fabric lining into the inside of the bag. Our small messenger bag is complete. If you make this project, please tag me on social media when you share your work at Dinah Levine Knits on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Pinterest, and Etsy. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can purchase a printable download of this pattern in my shop linked below. If you'd like to check out any of my knitting machine books, templates, and patterns, visit dianalevinenits.com. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a like, comment below, and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date when I release my latest tutorials.